Okay, so if we were going to visualize a clutch pedal uh, path, how would it look like? So I'm going to make a line with a high point and a low point. Okay, so here's the clutch pedal path. I have clutch out at the top and clutch in at the bottom. Let me label that. Clutch in, clutch to the floor, clutch out, foot off the clutch. You take your foot, you press your clutch pedal all the way down to the floor, clutch pedal goes low down to the floor, that is clutch in, clutch to the floor, you release your clutch, you bring it all the way up, clutch out, foot off the clutch. We'll name this pedal travel. I'm going to name this area a low point and this one a high point. Okay, so I'm gonna put a halfway mark so we can have a uh, so we can visually see the low area and a high area. Okay, so from clutch to the floor, we have a low to halfway, then we have a halfway to high and then clutch out. Now, if I wanted to make a bite point, how would that look? Um, for me, the bite point, even though it is a small, precise uh, area, um, you do have like one or two inches to move your foot in and out before it will stall. So it is not like a line but more like a box. So I'm going to make a box and uh, we'll name that the engagement or bite point. Okay, so the leading edge of this box that is your bite point. That's where the clutch starts to grab. You hold your clutch in the box. The car starts to move. Then you release your clutch. If you bring up your foot too fast past this point, your car stalls. So this is the part that is uh, pretty hard to learn. You got to bring your clutch uh, foot up to this point, hold it, car starts to roll, then you can bring out your clutch pedal. When you do a upshift clutch release, you bring it up to your engagement point, hold it for a second, then you can bring it out. One step, two step. So when you buy a car from a dealer, um, it comes with a clutch installed at the factory and uh, that is a factory clutch and uh, most cars will have their engagement point around this area maybe around here to around here it is normal to find here to here some cars, some manufacturers, they do have a higher clutch engagement point around, say, up around there. So it is normal that you're going to get into a car and that engagement point, even if it's a new car, it might be from here in one make of car to here in another make 
to up here in another make. Now, when a clutch wears the disengagement point, it will move up higher through your pedal travel. So you, it starts off here, you get some wear on the clutch, it'll move up here. More wear, it moves up here. More wear, it moves up here. So it goes uh, from the original position and it'll move up higher through the pedal travel. So uh, what doesn't change is this box, this engagement point or the bite point. So whether it is here or here, you still have to uh, move your clutch foot to this edge. The clutch will bite. Then you have to hold your clutch, car moves, then you release your clutch. So this doesn't change. What you feel here will be pretty much the same thing uh, whether it is up here. When the clutch wears, sometimes, actually often, this, um, what you feel here isn't as aggressive on a worn clutch. So you'll feel a smoother transition from here to here. It is completely possible to have uh, two cars, same make and model, say for example, two um, Toyota Corollas. One Corolla will have an engagement point here. You get in the other Corolla of the same year and it could have an engagement point up here just through wear of the clutch. So one car has a much uh, lower mileage or a newer clutch. The other car has a more uh, worn clutch. Sometimes you don't sometimes you don't have to have high mileage to have a worn clutch um, because uh, it could just be out of uh, from learning how to drive or um, somebody is not that great driver and they really wore out their clutch pretty quickly you can do that in uh, hours it doesn't have to take uh, thousands of uh, miles or kilometers so you can see that people can have different engagement points even on the same car and uh, this is important to understand when you're teaching yourself how to drive through reading or through video. The reason for this is um, if we take hill starts for example, if I watch a YouTube video about hill starts and the person says give gas then bring up your clutch, accelerate and go. Just do it. It's easy. So Let's put the engagement point here. This person says bring up your, or give gas, then bring up your clutch. Just do it like regular start, okay? They do it in their video, they make it look easy. So what happens here? Maybe they have an engagement point here. They give gas, they bring up their clutch, boom, it engages then they can release their clutch and the car goes. So they have a very short distance from the floor to their engagement point. Where giving gas and then just popping up their clutch works really well. But say for example in your own car, maybe you have a really worn clutch or Maybe it, is, uh, it just has a high engagement point from the factory. So we'll place it up here. Okay. So now you watch that video where the person gave gas and brought up their clutch and went. Now you've gone to the hill to try it. You're sitting on the hill. You take your foot off the brake. You're giving gas, you're giving gas, you're giving gas, you're giving gas, you're giving gas. 
all this time your car is rolling back and you are waiting for the clutch bite point, the clutch to engage and your car to start to roll. Since your engagement point is up here, you got to wait all this distance before your clutch engages. Even though you're giving gas just like the person uh, in the video. So then you get frustrated because you don't know what is going wrong. You think it is you, but it could just be that their bite point is very low and yours is very high. Of course, there is that inexperience, but this is something to look out for. This is a reason why when uh, doing hill starts, whether you have an engagement point here or up here, if you bring up your clutch first, so clutch up, give gas, wait for car to roll, clutch out. Engagement point here, clutch up, give gas, wait for car to roll, clutch out. If you get rid of this dead space where nothing is happening, then you get on your gas. There is a short distance of just uh, working through the clutch to get the car to roll. If you give gas and work up your clutch from the floor, you have all this distance until your clutch is going to bite. Okay, so let's take a look at flat ground starts. Uh, one of the most common complaints is my starts are taking forever. I'm giving gas, but the car is not moving. Um, it's taking a long time for the clutch to engage. So if you have a low engagement point around here, all you got to do on the flat ground is give gas, flick your foot up and the clutch will engage fairly quickly. If you have a high engagement point, even if it's say up here, you have, you're, you're giving gas and then you're bringing up your clutch, you're bringing up your clutch, you're bringing up your clutch. It's taking all this time to bring up your clutch and then your car is starting to move when you hit the bite point. If it's up here, same thing. Long distance until that bite point. So the easiest way to fix this is to get rid of this space where nothing is happening. And the way you do that is before you give gas, you're going to clutch up into this area, give gas, and then clutch up again. The reason you clutch up before your bite point is if you clutch up into the bite point, the car will start to move and you may not be ready. You may be at a red light or a stop sign and uh, you're waiting. So you just want to clutch up give gas and then clutch up again. Car starts to move very quickly. It is the same thing as having a low bite point where you're clutching up a small distance, except here you're adding an extra step where you're clutching up, giving gas, and then clutching up again. Okay, so that is that. And uh, so when you teach yourself through video or reading, just understand that the person in the video may be experiencing something completely different at their clutch pedal than you are. And, uh, you know, when you're listening to them or watching them do something, if you're very knowledgeable where your bite point is, then you can make the decision that what they're saying isn't working for you because you're feeling something completely different in your clutch pedal travel versus what they are showing in their video. And uh, 
it is very helpful to under just to know these couple of words because uh, being able to say your engagement point is high or low or halfway um, can really help someone who is experienced help you um, if you don't understand these words or you know you can't really tell where your bite point is along the pedal travel it is uh, harder for someone to give you advice and they may just say bring up your clutch or you know give gas and bring up your clutch but if you say oh my bite point is very high they may say something different that may be more helpful for you so uh, anyways, thanks for watching and uh, that's it.